We're going to start with the Pierre Amor Hoybier news. Um, Gary Jacob, fairly reliable man from the Times. He doesn't mess around. He considers journalistic integrity to be a thing. Uh, he says that Hoybier has agreed personal terms with Atletico Madrid. The story goes on to say that he's willing to do it. He's happy to go. He's pushing for it. He wants another challenge. Atletico Madrid. I don't know if there was a room. I, I haven't seen a number. Um, I don't know if either of you guys have seen a number that's been quoted, but we, we, I think we're presuming something around the 30 million euro, 35 million euro. Uh, Savar, I'll start with you. Um, how do you feel about this one? Are you sad? Are you? Is it? Does it make sense? So you know, where are you at? Yeah, listen. I'll caveat as always. I think it makes perfect sense as long as we, um, the money's got to be reinvested right into a player that that plays in the style of Ange Postecoglou. I think we've got to get to that stage now where it's got to be not about do we like the player individually, but does he actually suit what we're trying to do as a football club? I don't dislike Hoiberg. I don't particularly. You know, I'm not. I'm not that fond of him. I'm not unfond of him, if that makes sense. I just look at it and I think, can he can he play in that system that that Postacoglu adopts, where it's a lot of pressing, everybody getting forwards? I, I'm not sure, and I reckon that's probably why they'll be happier to let him go and let and bring in someone who plays a bit more to that mould. I think he's had a good, he's been a good servant for what is it, three years now, four years he's been at the club. Can't very good three, servant, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think he's been, I think he's been a really good servant. I think he's a great guy. I think he's got a great character. Um, and listen, I wish him luck going to Athletic Madrid. It's a good move for him. I think it's a good move for us. Um, so, yeah, I think it, it makes sense all, all round for that deal. Adam, uh, are you going to... Oh, actually, I, know, I think I know where you stand on this one. It's pretty clear for you. You've, you've never been a fan of his, have you? Not at all. But in fairness, though, like we're talking about a player that has only been with us under managers that played atrocious football. So like to, to a certain extent, you kind of wonder, is it down to the fact that he was playing under Mourinho and playing under Conte that had him be the stat padding, pass sideways, pass backwards, not particularly impressive looking footballer that I've loathed over the last few years? Or, or like, is, is, it, is that who he is? Um, I, I, it, there's no way we're going to know if, if he goes to Atleti now. There's no chance of us ever finding out uh, if he played in, in under a uh, attacking manager like Pastor <laughs> Doglu. Was he yeah. would he actually show a different side to himself? Um, I, I think I'd rather let him go on the risk that we're just going to get more of the same from him. When if we let him go and we brought in someone uh, more of a, a solid number six um, to rotate either with Basuma or or play the permanent like first team number six and then Basuma playing in the number eight. Um, I, I, th I think I'd be happier. So I am definitely, if we get decent money for him, and as Sava said, if we reinvest that money in a solid midfielder, then I, I, I'm more than happy to see him go. Yeah, 100%. 24Zs in the house saying, uh, Sava, you ain't stopping, my man. You are, you're just uh, you're a hopper and a popper across streams. I think it must be, uh, must be uh, where, have you, where have you been today? What, what streams have you done today? My, my own. Um, <laughs> and, and, and a week and a weekly show. Uh, I think what people forget is a lot of the YouTubers have weekly shows with the set same people. So it's not that I'm just hopping from one to the other. I, I'm, I'm in that show. Right. So, um, yeah. Yeah. He's a busy man. He's a busy man. I've got no, a good engine on me. I could play in the pressing formation. The, couldn't I? Could... He's the Pierre and Mahoy Bier of, uh, of the Tottenham community. <laughs> <laughs> I've got more Pierre pressing Emil than that, Sava. mate. So we're going to call you from now on. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear yeah look uh, I guess the pertinent question there that you're both sticking to and I, I agree is what do we do with the money mm. right and let's assume that it's 35 million we've got this guy here uh, Conor Gallagher look Tottenham apparently according to Nizar Kinsella who I don't know if he's a tier one people say he's a tier one I've never really known him to be that spectacular but he's saying it's a direct battle between Tottenham and West Ham for Gallagher's signature Again, I'll start with you, Adam, on this one. Do you expect, Adam, if we're going to sell players like Pierre Mahoyberg, that that money shouldn't be put towards the bucket of money that's needed to get the deals over the line for the players that we should be already have had in the door? Or are you okay with that money, the Hoybier money, going alongside the Sanchez money to make up the difference for Van de Ven and Tapsoba or whatever else? Or do you want that Hoybier money to replace a midfielder? I want the high of your money to replace the midfielder. I think it's a disgrace if we don't go out and get two top drawer centre-backs 
irrespective. We've been waiting for centre backs for far too bloody long, and Spurs are not a poor club. Like I've always been in the same uh, line of thinking as you, Sean. That like we, I, I didn't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater where Levy was concerned, and you know, <clears throat> I've always given him credit for operating. Uh, for being a shoot operator in the business world. But that being said, if you're going to give him credit for that, then when we know that we are not buckled financially, when we know that we are one of the strongest uh, teams in the world financially, and we know that we've not had a decent centre backs for a very, very long time, they have no excuse, absolutely zero excuse, especially when we were told last summer, look, we're going to plug these holes now and we'll plug these holes later. And the later holes were keeper and two centre-backs. And it shouldn't be two bloody useless centre-backs that are no better than what we have already or barely better. So yeah. we've, plugged, we've plugged the goalkeeper hole. I'm still a little bit on the on the fence as to whether or not Vicario was the right man for the job, but that still remains to be seen. We've done it. And the centre-back... Sorry, who was the right man for the job? Vicario. I'm not... I still... Oh, yeah. okay. I'm yeah. still a little bit like... Mm, I, I, I worry. I worry. But... That being said, we got a, a, goal, a goalkeeper in. We need centre backs in, and it needs to be that they need to be in, regardless of whether there's any money coming in or, or, or um, into the club at all. I understand the idea that we need to shift some centre backs before we bring some centre backs in, so we haven't got too many centre backs on the wage bill. I get that; that's business, but it doesn't make any sense to me that there isn't money there just sitting there waiting to be spent on top drawer centre backs. So I, if if Hoybier goes, we better be bringing in a set, a, another central midfielder who is of a higher quality than him with that money. And uh, but like, I don't want to skip too far ahead, but also if, if there is Harry Kane money coming in, and in my personal opinion, we should be selling Harry Kane and getting that money in, then there should be no excuses but to get absolutely insanely good centre backs and, and another midfield, a, a great midfielder to replace Hoybier, who I'd be happy to see the back of. So just just sticking with you for a second, if we yeah. if the answer to the question is, do we keep the money that we that we raise for selling Hoybier on well, a midfielder? Yeah. Is Connor Gallagher a guy that you think is worth a straight swap? If we can get thirty five mil for Hoybier, do you want? Would you be okay with Connor Gallagher being the replacement? I wouldn't pull my hair out over it, but I certainly it's not going to inspire me. I think Connor Gallagher is is a good player. He's not a number six, so I mean that's not uh, that's not necessarily someone that I think. Neither is Hoybier, yeah, so true. Yeah. But, but like we need, I think we, you know, the, with the likes of Skip and Sar and Bentecourt coming back eventually, Basuma can play in the number eight. Like I think a solid six is someone that we that we require. If Conor Gallagher comes in, I'm like, I think he's a he's a, he's a, he's a, he is a good player. He's got he's got an engine on him as well. He's young, um, you know, he'll work hard every game he plays. In. Oh, he's he can got play the press. Certainly could do the yeah, press work. Absolutely, 100%. So would I be happy with him in? Like, I, you know, I'd be, I'd be all right with him being in the team. But it's underwhelming when you consider that, you know, the kinds of players that we've been linked with and, the, you know, the ones that will actually make a significant difference. When you see the main thing for me, lads, is when you look at what the other teams are doing, it, I, I, feel, I feel depressed. When I look at the, the, the midfielders that Liverpool have bought, brought in, I get depressed. When I look at Man City going for uh, Josco Guardiol, I get depressed. When I look at, at Man United, you know, bringing in the players that they're bringing in, even even Chelsea, who who were playing yesterday, and two of their brand new players, who is it, Jackson and is it Nkunku, mm -hmm. came in, score goals, as well as Mudrick now actually looking like he could be it could be a second season starter. You know, what I mean, he, 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 his, his first season with Chelsea might have been a, a false start. And he could be an incredible, um, turn out to be an incredible acquisition. All the other teams around us, Aston Villa, flipping heck. Like, I I'm so underwhelmed at what we're doing. So, uh, um, would I be happy to have Colin Gallagher in our team? Yes. Is it underwhelming considering what we need to be doing to our team to be competing? Yeah. So, it's a weird one. I'd like him in the yeah. team, maybe in the squad. He's not someone that I think is a, is, is a good enough replacement for if we're losing Hoybier. Yeah, it's an interesting take, Adam. Like, for me, Sav, I think that Conor Gallagher is more of a replacement for someone like Lo Celso mm -hmm. than a Hoybier. I think that Conor Gallagher sits slightly further up the pitch. He's a little bit more creative. He's a little bit more of that kind of that pressing eight or the second eight or the 10 or whatever. Someone that could come in and fight for spots with maybe with Madison, maybe play behind Madison in the, in the Hatati role if he was to come in. But if you're mm -hmm. going to bring him in, then I think the most logical exit to replace 
uh, or to like to bring in um, Gallagher for would be someone like a Lo Celso. Um, mm. I don't know if you agree. What, what are your thoughts on Hoybier? If 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 he does leave, our same question basically. If he does yeah. leave, do you want do you want the money to be saved for a midfielder? <clears throat> or so is Conor Gallagher the guy. Yeah, it's it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, first and foremost, you, we should never be in a position where we're having to do one in, one out anyway. Do you know what I mean? It should like, for example, we can sell Hoiberg, buy Gallagher, and then still buy a number six. We shouldn't it shouldn't just be a one comes, one goes. That's where yeah. it all falls down. Yeah. Um, I agree largely with what Adam said. I think that the difficulty is, and I know Spurs fans hate hearing it and they just call me negative. When you look at the players that Adam just mentioned there, the problem is. They won't, they're not interested in Tottenham. There's no port Tottenham at the moment. We've got, we've got to look. The fact that we're all sitting here saying this about our own club, other players see it. Their, their agents see it. The man, the owners of other clubs see it. But seemingly, Absolver and Van der Ven want to come though, right? And we'd be I happy mean, with them. I, I, I mean, sh sure, but we don't know if they're happy to go. Do you know what I mean? That, that there's been so many stories around those two. I mm. have no idea what's going on with that anymore. But when, when you look at, like, for example, like, you know, we're not going to sign Alexis McAllister when Liverpool are the type of club that are going in for him. We're not going to sign a Sobersly. You know, Nkunku, he, don't wanna, he won't want to come to a Tottenham Hotspur. I think yeah. what we've got to do is build to the point where it goes kind of under the radar and you creep up on those teams. And then if people go, oh, I, I quietly like what they've done down there for the last year, 18 months. Completely that's, agree. That's when you can then go, hang on, look what we've done. Now imagine you joined us. At the moment, people are joining a complete unknown where they see how bad we are at the back. Let's be fair. They see how bad we are at the back. We see it. They see it. They see that we don't really change the team up much. Mm. They've seen how Levy acts in the market. Conor Gallagher. Look, for me, I, I like Conor Gallagher. I like, you know, I, don't, I, would, I want to be one of those fans. I just say I like him. That means I like him. It doesn't mean I think he's sensational. I don't think he's terrible. I think he does a really good job. He might not necessarily of... fit what we need, right? Like, I don't necessarily know if he... That's the reason why I asked about Lo Celso. Like, I, I think that Lo Celso's performance in the first 45 minutes or second 45 minutes of the first game we've seen, it was a bit of an eye-opener that I don't know whether he was putting himself in the shot window, but, like, maybe there's a player there. Maybe we don't need to make that move, Savvy. You know what I mean? Like, if are you just replacing like for like? Are you just swapping I, one I badge for another? I think the difference is with Lo Celso is I don't see him with an engine. I don't see him with the legs. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the stats for the last two years in the Premier League, um, Conor Gallagher, I, I didn't, know the, I don't know the name of the exact, exact stat, but that he went and joined in from midfield more than any other player. So what he does is he actually breaks through that line, gets into the box. So when the ball drops, he is, he is a goal threat. Yeah. He did it the other night for Chelsea. Yeah, it's a friendly, but you saw it the other night. Whenever they're attacking, he busts a gut to get in the in the box. And Postacoglu likes that. So is he a great player? I don't think he's a great player. Is he the level we're at at the moment? I, I think that's our level, mate. I, honestly, I know people hate me for saying this. I think that's where we're at. I don't think we're going to attract play. Like people just say things in the chat, like just get Amrabat. Amrabat's got Barcelona and Man United after him. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. why are you coming? Oh, to I, I think you. Hit, I think you made a really salient point, mate, about the sneaking up thing. I think Tottenham mm. have always been in that kind of weird middle zone between like, where we're acting as like we're trying to be a big club, but we don't really have the ability. Like, we don't have a man, a, a chairman who's willing to throw the dice financially and and take that risk, like you're seeing other clubs doing. You don't really have the success to draw upon. You have a lot of other things that are incidental, like the stadium, all that stuff. You kind of, you know, almost like all the gear, no idea a little yeah. bit. And yet, if you want to go and, and close the gap on the likes of Man City, when you see Guardiola and those guys, like there's a consequence of being successful. The teams that are the most successful earn the most money. The teams that are, earn the most money can pay the best, pay the most money and, and, and attract the best, play, the best players. It's a vicious cycle. Of course the only way you can break that gap is by flying under the radar a little bit or taking risk. And if Tottenham can't take risk because we've got an owner that doesn't want to do that, then you have to fly under the radar and see if you can scout and go after the the, the unknowns and the kind of the people that are um, making noises, like what Brighton are doing. Mate, exactly. And just quickly, someone in the chat says, Savvy, you made the same argument about Madison and we got him. My, my argument about Madison was always if other clubs come in for him, if the other big clubs bid for him, they'll get him before us. 
but it's been widely reported we were the only club that put in a bid for James Madison. So I would expect to get that done. If we were up against Liverpool, Man City, Chelsea, I don't. So that was my point. Look, we, we can talk about how attractive we are as a club. I, I think at the moment, I look at it and I say, if you're Amrabat, Sean, if you're, if you're Amrabat, if you're an Nkunku who's gone to Chelsea, if you are Sobosly going to Liverpool, first of all, it's not just about how attractive Spurs are to join. Attraction isn't just about the club. Attraction is about how do we deal with them in the transfer market? How quickly yeah. does the owner show that he wants you to come to the club? That's all part of attraction. Of how course, much yeah. will you pay? Right? So yeah, yeah. Fan, it's, fans it's, There's many say, variables and Tottenham, Tottenham seem to struggle on, on several right. of them. Right? Yeah, F I agree. Fans, yeah. fans can say that we're attractive, but look at Van der Ven and Tapsoba, for, for lack of a better word, uh, for lack of a be better choice. Those two could be very interested in Spurs, but surely it's going to become less attractive the more we haggle over paying 30 to 35 million pounds for a player. At what point does the player in that five weeks turn around and go, hang on, yeah. do, they, do they want me? Do you well, want so, me? Like so, so that, I mean, that, that, this goes back a little bit to the art, like the debate that you and I have had a little bit ad nauseum recently about who's more attractive out of Aston Villa and Tottenham. Mm. Not, not, to get, not to get sucked back into it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Like when Aston Villa's chairman is willing to get the deal done and, and Daniel Levy isn't, I'm not sure that that blends into attractiveness. Like, you know, obviously with the failure of Pau Torres, like Pau Torres wasn't attracted to Tottenham for whatever reason, but he yeah, was yeah. attracted to joining Villa, I think in no small part because of massively the Unai Emery pool rather than the Villa pool, personally. But that was standing, I still think that Tottenham could attract a higher calibre of player than, than Aston Villa if... Daniel Levy was willing to to get the ball over the line, Adam. Do you know what do you know what I mean, mate? Like if I, if 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 Daniel Levy was willing to like, there's no if we miss out on Tapsober and Van der Ven, it's not because we weren't attractive enough as a club. Yeah, yeah, that's why I mentioned those specifically. I don't think that Tapsober and Van der Ven would, would look at would look at Spurs and say no, thank you. I think they'd be they'd be eager to go. I think there's plenty of players out there. Like Sava is a hundred percent spot on in saying that there are players that look at Spurs and say absolutely not a chance in hell. Yeah, uh, but I think that there's there are very very high quality players who would instantly improve us, who put us in the like you got there are a significant number of Spurs players that are still top drawer and 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 Postacoglu will get a serious um, level improvement from them from the ones we already have in the squad. So when you're talking about just finding players who are better than what we have in the pockets of nonsense and elevating those. There's, there are plenty of players out there that'll do that, and, and I don't believe for a second we'll turn their nose up at Spurs. So Tapsoba, obviously one. Van der Ven's another. Raya would have loved to come to Spurs, only we went the other way. It's not it's not beyond the, the, the realm of, of reason to think that we can get players that significantly improve the squad um, that would that be keen to come. It's just that you're not going to get a Kylian Mbappe, obviously. Yeah. Just don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying we're not attractive at all, Adam, by the way. I, <laughs> I, I just think when I see so many people say things like, just go and get Bastoni, just go and get Vardial, yeah, yeah, we should have got Nkunku. Yeah. And it's like... No, you're dead on. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, there's, there's levels to the game. What yeah, planet are you on, you know? That's all just, I'm saying. Yeah.